Guys, uh, Dr. Davalin Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about the physics as well as, um, I guess, the properties of sunscreens and how it pertains to everyday life. Now, the big question is this, can, uh, th does actual glass from your car or the office window protect you from uh, harmful UV rays? So we know for a fact that UVB, right, so UVB is the one that gives you sunburn, gets attenuated by glass. However, UVA can go through glass. Now, in the automotive industry, uh, it is not regulated in the context of uh, UV protection. So most car manufacturers will have protection obviously against UVB, but most of them would actually have a good attenuation of UVA, but that's only for the front windscreen. Now, uh, for the side windscreens, there is no law, I guess, in the automotive industry to actually address nor state the amount of UVA protection. In reality, there's a lot of amount of UVA coming through. Now, UVA is the one that goes deeper into your skin. UVB, like I said, is more superficial, gives you sunburn. UVA goes deeper, it causes immune suppression, it causes breakdown of elastin, breakdown of collagen, breakdown of hyaluronic acid. So, um, in time, that's the UVA uh, gives you the most amount of sun damage, as well as potential skin cancers, uh, and also fragments your collagen, which means it gives you more open pores and pimples. So, what do we do about this? Well, certainly sunscreens can help. So, should you be wearing a sunscreen inside the car? The answer is yes, but there's a catch. Because sunscreen, as you all know, is an index, so when we're talking about the SPF, it's an index of burn time, not the index of UVA protection. So, if you're using a, a, a SPF of 30, means if you take one minute to burn, you can actually take 30 minutes to burn if it's applied in the correct manner, right? So once again, UVB is only a manufacturer, or sorry, only a reflection of sunburn time. Now, what about UVA? Can it be protected with sunscreens? The answer is partially. So when we look at certain, um, uh, I guess, broad spectrum uh, sunscreens, uh, it obviously protects against UVB, however, certain ingredients, for example, titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, and various other chemicals can protect against UVA. But the UVA they protect against is basically short wave UVA, so the long wave UVA still goes through. Now, that's why I guess you shouldn't have the false, I guess, uh, assumption that when you use sunscreen, you're protected against everything, nor should you have the assumption that when you're in the car, you're protected against everything, yeah? So obviously, <laughs> In the best case scenario, you're in the car, the windows are up, you're using sunscreen. What else can you do? Well, um, there are tints out there um, that manufacturers actually produce and that you can go to, for example, uh, a tint shop and they will apply the tint for you. You can have a clear coat tint. That can actually attenuate up to 97% of UVA. Um, the other thing as well is just normal window tint, which can attenuate 80 to 90%. So there are things you can do uh, I guess that decreases the amount of sun exposure in the car. This is especially important for people who uh, suffer from, for example, pigmentation or more importantly, melasma or cholesma, because we know that these individuals have the tiniest amount of UV and the UV action spectrum for that goes all the way from UVB, UVA, all the way to visible, visible light and sometimes even into infrared light, yeah, which is heat. So if you do suffer from, for example, a pigmentation like melasma, it's often, I guess, advisable, if not essential, not only to use hats, sunscreens, but also use tinting in your car. And that's how, I guess, uh, you can treat the majority of, or attenuate the majority of UVB, UVA, and all the other spectrums coming through. Now, now when it comes to actually, uh, I guess, diagnosing and trying to actually uh, make the most amount of impact yeah, for patients with pigmentation. I often spend at least 20-30% uh, of the uh, interview uh, asking about the patient's well-being, but not only that, it's how much sun exposure they get. Because if you can find the right limiting factor for sun exposure, chances are, if you can modify that, you're going to get a better result compared to just saying, let's just use sunscreen. So when, I guess when I interview you, or when I'm asking for clinical features, you'll hear me time and time again asking, what do you do? What, 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 um, how long does it take for you to go to work? How long do you spend in your car? Do you take the train? Do you take the bus? Uh, do you walk to work? What kind of sunscreen do you use? What kind of hats do you use? Do you use a broad brim hat? Now what do you do after work? Do you walk back from work? How much sun exposure do you get? 
what do you do over the weekends? Because, uh, for example, if you've got kids, chances are you're going to take them to sport. Um, you're going to actually spend time in the playground. If you like fishing, chances are you're going to get eight hours of uh, additional sun exposure per week. So when I add everything up over the entire week, I come up with a number, which is basically the number of which uh, the potential amount of UV gets onto your skin. And if I can attenuate or address that big number to something that's smaller, chances are I'm going to actually make a difference, especially when, I'm, when it comes to treating pigmentation, in particular melasma. So forgive me when you see me and I actually ask and ask and ask because I think it's very, very important. It's not that you go see a dermatologist, they smack you in hydroquinone, they start some lasers, start some peels and tell you to stay off the sun. It's not that, yeah? It's trying to actually find out the rate limiting factor uh, for the patient, modifying that and uh, using other modalities which are scientifically proven to get you a good result. Guys, I hope you like that uh, video. It's just a very quick one on my view on sun exposure, yeah? And it gives you some physics, something to think about uh, and if possible, uh, if you can tint a car, that's going to actually reduce the amount of uh, UV you get. Uh, this is not sponsored by a car tinting company. Uh, it's basically science. Guys, see you, same place, same time, next week. Bye for now.